Hey, I want to come to the message this morning, and I want to share a message with you that I've entitled Living on Assignment. Living on Assignment. I loved um, Seal's message last Sunday about the, the blessing of a burden, and I prepared this message before I listened to his one online, and when I listened to it, I thought, God, you're amazing. This is like part two of his message from last week, so the Holy Spirit is definitely speaking to us. Living on Assignment. Now, Last Sunday, uh, some of you may have noticed that I wasn't here, that Andrew and I weren't here. Where we were is that we were up at Mungaweka. How many know Mungaweka? You drive through there, that just that little place that if you blink when you're driving through, you miss it, you know. And, um, but there's a great church up there. There's an Assemblies of God church. We're in Assemblies of God church, and, and, uh, and I relate with the pastors up there quite closely, and, and we're in support of them. And so we were up there last Sunday preaching. And, uh, you know, I love being in an environment where I'm preaching to farmers, you know, farmers and shearers and, and this sort of stuff, because I grew up in that sort of environment, and so I'm able to relate quite well. And, uh, but anyway, it was, uh, it was really interesting interesting because um, the, we met a new family, a, a new family, a Samoan family that have recently moved from South Auckland down to Taihapi and uh, Fui, Fui Pua, the, the husband, he is a, 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 a constable at the Taihapi police station. He, he had been a detective for about the last 10 years in South Auckland. And uh, while I was preaching away, uh, I was sharing the word, and he was like, yes, amen, and he was getting excited down the back, and I thought, wow, you know, God's really touching him. And we had a chat over a cup of tea afterwards, and he said, let me tell you my story. Can I tell you my story? I said, go for it. And uh, he shared with me how he came to being in the police force. And as a young boy growing up, he had damaged his, his right eye and, uh, well, he, he had a, an infection, I think, and through a medical misadventure, uh, his right eye was partly blinded. And, uh, and so that had caused him to not be able to study and, and that sort of thing like his brothers and sisters had done. And his dad said to him, why did you join the police force? So uh, he came to New Zealand with his wife and family. He, he started out in the forestry industry up in um, um, Rotorua there. And, uh, but then uh, he, he thought, no, I've got to follow through on this dream of joining the police force. But he knew that his eyesight would be a problem. He knew that probably he wouldn't get in because of his eye condition. So he said to God, he said, God, if you get me into the police force, I will serve you with my life. I will give my life to serving the purposes of God. I will, I will make serving God my assignment. Isn't that what we should all be doing? But this is the, the kind of the, the arrangement he had with God. And so uh, he spent a couple of years preparing for the, the, uh, the, doing the prelims to get into the police force and, and there were tests and exams and things. And he knew that at the end of that, there'd be a medical. He'd have to do this medical and this would be the issue. But he went ahead anyway. It was like a step of faith, really. And he got called up for the medical and he went along to the eye specialist and he was sitting in there waiting for his appointment and uh, other people were coming in after him and going and having the appointment, going out before him. And he's thinking, what's going on here, you know? After a while, a doctor stepped out from another room, a different room from where all the other doctors have been stepping out. The doctor stepped out, called his name, and he said, yep, that's me. So he went off to this little side clinic where they had one of those eye machines that you look into. And he sat there and he looked into it and they, the doctor did the test on his eyes. And of course it came back that one eye was partially blind. And the doctor said a really interesting thing to him. He said, son, it's not your eye. It's the machine. He's like, really? Okay, because last I, th I knew it was my eye. Anyway, so the doctor said, no, come into this next room. Come and sit in here and we'll, we'll put you on another machine. So he sat in there and he looked into this machine. Same result came back that his eye was partially blind. The doctor said, son, it's not your eye, it's the machine. I was like, two machines? How could two machines be, be busted? He took him into a third room and he sat him in the machine, looked into it, it came back with a result that his eye was partially blind. The doctor said, son, it's not your eye. It's not your eye, it's the machine. I mean, by now you'd be thinking, you know, what's this doctor smoking? You know, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> Seven machines later, Seriously, seven machines later, he's sitting on the seventh machine looking into this, this, eye, this aperture and suddenly he sees a light appear. And, and, he, and something, a clarity came to his eye. And it came back reading that his eye was, 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 he got healed at that moment. And the doctor said to him, see son, I told you, it's not your eye, it's the machine. Wow. And so in that moment he was healed. And, and so, uh, so Fui, uh, the, the doctor wrote Fui a, a letter, well, wrote a letter to the police recruiting to say that his eyesight is satisfactory and he should be admitted into the police force. And he got into the police force. 
And um, I'm thinking, I'm listening to the story thinking, wow, that sounds amazing. I've got to do a little bit of digging around. So I tried to contact that doctor. I found where he works. And um, he wasn't an angel or anything like that. He's actually a real doctor. And, um, and, but he's away till the 18th. So I'm waiting for the 18th to ring him up and just get a bit more of the story from his end. Because I reckon somewhere along the line, this doctor's got some faith. He said, no, you know, somewhere along the line, the Lord must have spoken to him, you know. It's, it sounds like, you know, the story of Naaman in the Old Testament going into the river seven times and on the seventh time coming up healed. It's got that kind of ring to it. So I want to do a bit more detective work, dig around. But anyway, Fui said this. He said, he said because of what God did, because of that healing, because of this, uh, this, this pact that he had made with God, the Lord, if you get me into the police force, I'm going to serve you with my life. He said, I've been doing that ever since, the last 11 years. I've been absolutely giving myself. He said, he said, policemen, they know the problems in the community. They're right there at the forefront. He said, so when I'm, when I'm off duty, when I'm after hours, I go back to those homes and I share Jesus with them. And I share the love of God and I tell them that Jesus is the answer. And over the last few years, him and his wife have led seven families to the Lord. And and introduced them into church life. And now he's relocated from South Auckland to Tai Happy. And he's landed in the Mungaweka Assembly of God Church. So I tell you, something good is going to happen in that church. God is bringing things together. And, um, you know, and I just, I, I thought about that story. And I thought to myself, there's a great example of someone living on assignment. Now, now, you might not have a story like his. You might not have a story like Fui's. You might just be like me, just fairly ornery, you know. But let me tell you, every one of us have been given an assignment from God. You have been given an assignment. You've been given a calling. And let me tell you, friends, you and I will be held accountable for it. We will be held accountable what we did with the calling, what we did with the gifts of God. We can't just hang around and go, oh, well, you know, no, no, it doesn't, doesn't account for me. Yes, it does. We've been saved. I love the um, Salvation Army concept. You know, the, on the collars of the Salvation Army officer, they have SS. Does anyone know what that stands for? Yes, I do. Our, our ex-Salvation Army people, save to serve. Friends, you and I have been saved to serve, to save to serve God. We're on assignment. And... Um, you know, the Bible refers to us as aliens and strangers. Turn to the person next to you and say, so, I didn't realize it, but you're an alien. Did you know that? You're an alien. You say, what? How does that work? 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 11 tells us we're aliens and strangers. What it's saying is, it's not saying that we're from Mars, but what it's saying is that earth is not our ultimate home. Heaven is our home. We are, we are heavenly. I, I heard um, Lorana here, a uh, Beautiful Lorana. She, there we go. Uh, she said she prayed a prayer in our service in our prayer meeting earlier this morning, and uh, she said, "Lord, we are we are not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We are actually spiritual beings having a physical experience." We were first spiritual, and heaven is our home. We are just passing through this life. But let me tell you, friends, you're not just passing through this life as a sightseer or a tourist. You're passing through this life as someone on a mission. You're passing through this life with an assignment. You've got a job to complete while you're here. And this is super, super important that we get a hold of this and we understand it. We are missionaries on a mission. We're soldiers on an assignment. We've got a job to do. And one day, as I said before, we will be held, account, held to account for what we did. What did you do with the gifts? What did you do with the call that I put on your life? Jesus is going to say to us. Now, sometimes I hear people say, they say, oh, I just so struggle to know what God has called me to do. I don't know what my calling is. What is my calling? And I think to myself, yes, I'm thrilled when I hear that. Not, hear, not thrilled that they're struggling, thrilled that they're even concerned that there's a call. Do you know what I mean? That's way better than somebody who who's, you know, doesn't give a rip about what God's called them to do. So well, I'll live my own life, thank you very much. I want to be saved, but that's all at all. I don't want to serve. I, I love it when someone's struggling because, because they're looking. They're concerned about this. They want to know, God, what have you called me to? Do you know that if you search with that sort of heart, you'll find? You'll find? And part of my job as a pastor is to point this out and point you in the right direction and create pathways for you to find that, for you to find that calling. That's what we're all about. That's what Next Steps is all about, you know? And so... So I, I don't mind when I hear people say that. You know, somebody that's, 
uh, that's not living for a sense of something bigger than themselves, a, a purpose, a, you know, pleasing a purpose bigger than themselves. They're, they're like, a, they're like a, a horse that's not been broken in. They're like a horse whose, whose willful spirit hasn't been broken. See, there's, there's something about us. There's this willful spirit within us that just wants to live selfishly. And at some point in our lives, we've got to say, God, I'm giving up on this. Break me. You know, I love this song we're singing. You know, the, the new wine comes out of brokenness and crushing. So that's one of the reasons for the, the trials and the difficulties that we face in life. If we're willing to do them with God, then there's this crushing that happens and there's this breaking. And then there's the power, a new power of the life of God that comes forward within us. But unless we're willing to, to do that, we, we, can't, we, we, we can't even pursue a call. You know, God can't use us. It's just like a, a farmer can't use a horse or a racing horse trainer can't use a horse that has not been broken in. It's willful. It's doing its own thing. And so, so the challenge is for us to be willing to allow ourselves to be broken in, to say, God, you've got a calling for my life. I'm living on assignment. Now, just imagine with me a group of soldiers that were deployed into another country on a, on a military mission. So they go in there, they've got this military mission, they've got their brief. But when they get there, it's kind of like a really beautiful place and the local girls are beautiful and they kind of forget why they're on mission. And they kind of think, wow, maybe we'll just, we'll just get married and settle down. So they marry one of the local girls, they settle down, build a house, have a family, you know, put off the, the, the army fatigues and put on board shorts and <laughs> just live the life. Live the, you know, during World War II, there were guys that were, you know, deployed to, to um, uh, little Pacific islands that this sort of thing started to happen. They, they forgot why they were there, you know, it's such a beautiful place. But just imagine these soldiers doing that. What a sorry situation that would be. What's going to happen when the enemy invades and finds these soldiers at rest without their weapons at the ready? What's going to happen? They've forgotten that they're on assignment. No, a soldier has got to keep before them the mission that they're on. They must remember why they're there and what they must do. And friends, so must we as Christians. We can't forget the assignment that we're on. We're called to serve a mission. Now, I, I love, um, some of you know that I have a bit of a passion. I love reading World War II history. It's just one of those, it's funny, it puts me to sleep at night. You know, like, <laughs> it's crazy, I know. You go, what? You read about bombs and things and it helps you sleep? Yeah, it does. Pretty much every night, about maybe 20 minutes or so, I'm reading World War II history and I, and I just go to sleep with that. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But right now I'm reading about spies. I'm reading about the secret war. I'm reading about the, the war of intelligence between the, the Axis and the Allies during World War II. And, and, um, and spies are a really interesting breed. You see, a spy has to blend into the society that they've been assigned to um, but they have to always remember that they're on a mission. Um, uh, you know, I mean, the, blending with it, they have to make it look like they live in the high life and that they're, they're an entrepreneur, a sort of a playboy or playgirl, you know, the sort of the James Bond sort of deal, you know, and, uh, and so they're not suspected that they're actually there looking for ways that they can undermine the enemy and send intelligence back to their, to their controllers, their handlers. But some spies get so caught up in the blending bit, they forget about the mission bit. And uh, during the war, there were these, these people, these men and women, that they would, get, they would be given a lot of money to make it look like they were a really successful entrepreneur. And they loved it. And they, boy, they, they got into the life. And then their guard was down. And next thing, they're getting snapped. And they're thrown into prison and executed and all of this sort of stuff. Friends, we've got to remember we're on the mission. We can't, can't start to blend so much that we forget what this is all about. See, the same thing can happen with Christians. It's so easy to forget the assignment. Life gets busy. Stuff goes down. How many people have had stuff go down in your life? Man, that's so common to all of us. Stuff goes down. Your thinking gets challenged. Pressures mount. And before you know it, you've forgotten the assignment that you're on. You're on a heavenly assignment. You've forgotten that. What can we do about this? What can we do to counter this tendency to drift from our core, from our mission? How can we keep God's assignment before us and center our lives around his call? What can we do? Well, a few years ago, I undertook to do a degree. 
Uh, studied for four years. I started about six, ago, six years ago, completed it two years ago. Any, any students here tonight, this morning, any people studying? You know what assignments are all about, don't you? You know what assignments are all about. You know, there's just assignment after assignment. You get the assignment. It's like two and a half thousand words, and you've got to have that completed by that date. And there's another assignment to do, and, and on it goes. Well, I, I discovered a, a little secret to staying on task with my assignments because it's so easy to get into an assignment and you start to read all the books and articles that you're supposed to read and, and a lot of it's really interesting and it sort of takes you down this, this pathway of thought and so on. But, I just, but, but, you, but you've got a brief. The, the lecturer has given you a brief. You've got to write your assignment about this topic. And so what I discovered to help me keep on task, I would copy and p- copy that uh, brief out of my instructions and I would paste it onto my assignment at the top where whenever I was writing and, and maybe getting a bit lost in my thinking, I'd scroll to the top and it'd remind me, oh, that's right, I'm supposed to be writing about that. Because, you know, there's lots of interesting things that you start thinking about and you can wind up writing about all sorts of stuff. And if you don't write about the brief, you're going to get a D, man. You're not going to pass that thing, no matter how good your academic writing is. If you don't write about the subject they want you to, to, to address. So I would go back to the brief and, ah, that's right. I'm supposed to be looking for that information. All right, scrap all that rubbish there. Kill that thousand words. That was going nowhere. Let's get back to the brief. I think you and I need that in our lives. We need a brief. We need to, uh, some way of reminding ourselves. Now, now, what is it that we're about again? Why am I on the planet again? Why did, why did Jesus, oh, that's right, that's right. And go back to the brief. Are you hearing me this morning? Getting that brief clear is so important. Church, this is what we're about. We've got to keep checking on the assignment brief or we can forget why we're even here. We can forget the reason that Jesus saved us. So what is our brief? What is our assignment brief? Well, if you come with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, we're getting to the Scriptures. We're getting there now. Matthew, chapter 5, and turn up with me, verse 14 to 16. If you've got an iPad or, a, or an actual Bible, come with me there. And otherwise, just listen. And this, this verse, these verses really are the foundation of what we're about as a church. We call ourselves salt for a reason because wrapped up in that name is an assignment brief. You and I are called to be the salt of the earth. We're called to be influencers. We're called to be people who bring the God flavors to to the world. But this uh, this part I've selected is really more about the light side of it. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Friends, in broad terms, that's our brief. Our assignment is to our assignment brief is to reflect the character and the nature of God to all people and bring glory to his name. How do we do that? Well, we do that when we make a decision to grow in God, when we make a decision to learn about him and read his word and, and, and grow in the attributes of God, grow in the character of God. And then we, allow, then we begin to live that out in our behavior and in our attitudes. And what we're doing is we're bringing glory to God. We're bringing light wherever we go. It's that simple. And uh, we start to reflect the nature of God. There's a really, really cool little summary of the nature of God in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit, which we could also say is the nature of God, is love, joy, peace, patience. Come on, say it with me if you know it. Uh, let's start again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and my favorite self-control. Wow, there's that will, that self-will that's just been laid at the foot of Jesus' cross. And so I'm going to lay that down. I'm going to live for you, Lord. It's no longer about me. It's no longer about my, what I want. I'm a soldier in the army of God. I'm a mission, missionary on a mission assignment. Lay that down. And we begin to reflect the character of God. So that's the broad brief. That's the very broad brief. Another way we could describe it is like this, to know God and to make him known. Wow, let's keep coming back to that. Why am I on this planet? Lord, to know you. I want to know you, Lord. I was so good at the men's conference, just investing that time, saying, God, I want to know you. God, would you just do whatever you got to do in my heart? 
Change me, Lord. Turn me around. Turn me upside down. Do whatever you've got to do, but I'm here because I want to know you. And then to make him known. Lord, affect all of my relationships. Affect the way I talk, the way I speak, the way I act. Help me, Lord God, to reflect your nature. What an awesome thing. But oh, how easy it is to forget this. Isn't it? The brief. Oh, what's the brief again? We're at the supermarket. You've got 10 minutes to buy groceries. You're in a hurry. You've had to dive in there. It's raining. You've got to dive back out again and be the next place. 10 minutes to get your groceries. And then you get to the checkout and, and there's a 10 meter line in front of the checkout. Oh, I've only got 10 minutes. And you're in a rush. You've had a long day and your nerves are frayed. Anybody, anybody identifying with me right here? I'm just writing about my life. I don't know about what your life's like. Okay, Your nerves are frayed. And then someone cuts in in front of you. You know, they, they steal your spot and they run into the little, the little kiosk where you're putting in your card and everything. And say, hey, you're not supposed to be in there. And next thing you know, you start to react and you start to think of some words about that person that aren't in the Bible. You know, and you might even be tempted to say them. You know, it's bad enough just thinking them. You forget the assignment. You forget what it was you're here to do. Here's a perfect opportunity to show the, the grace of God. Here's a perfect opportunity to display patience. Here's, I mean, is the world going to end because you don't get to your next appointment exactly on time? I have to tell myself that regularly because I hate not being on time. I hate it. And it's good to be on time. But it's, it's not that important that you would allow the old nature to come back and reflect not God. Let's reflect God in those moments. So we, we, these things happen and we forget the brief in those moments. Now, when you're given an assignment at university, a good lecturer will, will give you a broad brief, but then they'll sharpen it with some bullet points. And I say a good lecturer, because they don't all do this. Some of them just give you the broad brief, and oh, man, now it's so broad. I, am I going to hit the mark or what, you know? But then some of them go, okay, we want you to write about this, but, but, but then in your writing about this, we want you to answer this and do that, that, and that. Oh, okay, now I've got it a bit clearer. I can do that. I can, I, and when I'm reading my books and my articles, I'm going to look for those things. I'm going to be sharp. And Jesus sharpened up the brief in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, when he, when he said to the disciples, just before he ascended back to heaven, he got the disciples around and he said, listen, here's your brief. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. It's like, oh, okay. So it's a bit more than just reflecting Jesus. It's a bit more than just making God known. We've got to do some teaching. We've got to gather some people. We've got to get alongside them and journey through life with them. We've got to do some walking in their shoes. We've got to make disciples. So, and, and, and friends, I want to tell you, this is still the church's assignment. It wasn't just for 2,000 years ago. It's still the church's assignment. We are here to make disciples. We're here to have an impact. We're here to advance the kingdom of God on the, on the planet. That's why we do things like build a poultry farm in Cambodia. I hope you saw that. Because I noticed quite a few of you are still standing around chatting while the video was going. <laughs> but, oh no, this is really important. I don't want people to miss this. But why do we, why do, we do a project like that? Because there's a couple there called Vui and Perrin, a, a local couple that are serving Jesus. And our missionaries, Mark and Janice Summer, will be returning to New Zealand before terribly long. And we want to make sure that what we leave there in Cambodia can self-perpetuate and, can, and th this couple can be about the work of the ministry with their natural needs taken care of. So we're starting up a business. What a beautiful way to think. And why? Because it's about advancing this brief on the planet. It's not about all us just sitting here in Palmy looking after our own little patch. No, no, no. We're always going to be challenging to look out, look beyond. And it comes down to us individually. How does my life reflect some sort of impact beyond my life? Because we're living on assignment. So it's more than just reflecting people. It includes teaching, making disciples, advancing the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So what, what about individually then? That's, that's what we do as a church. And, you know, we have aspects of that in our lives. I mean, what I'm doing right now is disciple making. I'm teaching the Word of God. What about individually? What's our assignment brief personally? Well, each one of us, we've got a specific role to play in this broader brief, this broader assignment brief. We all have different gifts and different callings. Some of us are gifted to teach children. 
We really are. My wife is a gifted child, uh, early childhood teacher. In her preschool, just this week, she was telling me just on, I think it was Thursday or Friday, she had these little kids sitting around, and one of them was crook. He, was, he I had a uh, um, skin problem, you know, eczema-type things, and it was all scabby and everything. And, and she just started talking to these kids about healing. And, uh, and she said, you know, do you know the Holy Spirit is able to heal through us? And she got all these little kids standing around laying hands on this little one, praying for healing. I said, if you get chucked out of the preschool for that, well, I don't know what's going to happen. She said, no, no worries, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it is a Christian preschool, okay. It is a Christian preschool, but I'm not sure if their doctrine is, is one of healing. But anyway, no worries. She is going with the Holy Spirit on it. Beautiful. Some people are gifted with children. Others are gifted with hospitality. Some are gifted creatively, some are gifted musically, some in leadership, some in public speaking. Whatever you're gifted at, friends, that's a bullet point to your brief. Do this work and use that gift. Oh, yes, I've got that gift. I can do that. See, did you know that craftsmanship is one of the gifts in the Bible? I love that gift. I have that gift. I know my five gifts. I did the did, uh, next steps recently and I went through that again. I have five gifts in my life. And one of them is craftsmanship. Some of you are familiar with these little fire pits that I've been making. Uh, on, uh, Damien brought one off me and others are ordering them and things. And God's blessing this because I'm using this to raise funds for missions. And it's using that, that gift, using that gift to do something for the kingdom of God. What a cool thing. If you'd like a fire pit, a Darth Vader looking one come and see me afterwards. $200, very good, very good price for you. Anyway, uh, that's the advertising over with. All right. But hey, whatever your gift is, that is a bullet point to your brief. Let's not ignore that. In Romans 12, verse 4 to 6, we read, for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. It's true, isn't it? My hand does different things to my foot. My eye does different things to my ear, but it's all me. It's all part of my body. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, one body here at Salt, one body worldwide, body of Christ. We form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. There's that doing life as a we rather than just an I. Verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Friends, you've got gifts. So we have different gifts and passions, but all these gifts Friends, they're to find their expression in reflecting Jesus to the world and making disciples under that broad brief. That's what we're about. We're not just serving ourselves. They are the bullet points to the main brief. Friends, when we lose sight of this, we lose our way. When we lose sight of the the assignment, we lose our way. We really do. My encouragement to you today is to renew that that if, if you need to, maybe you're living, maybe you're just living it like my friend Fui up in, up in uh, Thai Happy. Maybe you're living it, but maybe you're not. And today is a, t- a day to say, I'm going to start living for the assignment. I'm going to make a fresh decision to live on assignment, the assignment that God has given me. See, see listen, listen, our brief is not just to make the world a better place. There's a lot of people in the world making the world a better place right now, and they're not Christians. They're not They're not kingdom of God people, and they're doing a real fine job of it. But yours and my brief is not just to make the world a better place, it's to make disciples. See, we can, we can spend all our time trying to make the world a better place, and we can be doing all these great things, but if we're not actually about the brief of God, we've got to be held to account. Did you, you made the world a better place, but you actually didn't make disciples. You actually didn't help other people find a way to Jesus and into the kingdom of God. So, we need to remind ourselves of this fact. Uh, yeah, wow. If you're a business person, and here's my, here's my challenge to us today. If you're a business person, and we've got a, a great ministry that you saw advertised before called Kingdom and Business. And I'll tell you, it's real exciting. This is just something the Lord's put in my heart this year. And we want to build a community of our business people so that there's a sense of support and encouragement and, and uh, a camaraderie, fellowship, and, and, and so on. But there's also a sense of we are working toward kingdom cause. We're putting the kingdom first. If you're a business person today, can I ask you, how are you using your business to advance God's kingdom? Because that's your brief. And we have a lot of business people in Salt here who are using their, their business for the advancing of God's kingdom, investing uh, money into places like Malawi and Cambodia and, and, and works within church here. It's awesome. But maybe there's some that aren't. What are you doing to serve God's kingdom with your business? If you're a musician, how are you using your gift to advance God's kingdom? Wow. We had two of our musicians this week 
uh, uh, Hayden and Gareth, they were, they were the, uh, the drummer and the bass player for the men's conference we've just been to down in Levin. Now, Hayden was the, was the drummer there. I think the, the previous drummer had, had to pull out for a various reason. But the bass player that they had lined up died during the week. He died. He had a heart attack, I think it was, and died. And so Hayden put the call out. Gareth said, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll come and I'll spend the weekend using their gifts for the kingdom of God. Big, and here they are, both on musicians this morning. All weekend, we sung ourselves hoarse. I mean, far out. They, the last night we had this massive big time where, where uh, they're the preaching. Sorry, i just got to say this because it's really, really cool. The preaching was all about kingly authority. You know, the Bible says that in Christ we are kings and priests. And the message is all about men. You need to understand the authority that you've received in Christ. And so the speaker said, I've got a sword here. And I'm going to dub. I'm going to dub the men. I'm going to dub you all. You know, like put the sword on the shoulder. I dub thee, you know, Sir Lancelot or whatever the case. You know. <laughs> Sir, son of God, king, king, of, you know, a king in, in, in God's priesthood, God's king, kingdom. And, uh, and so, that, so all the men, I've got photos of guys kneeling down and being dubbed with this real sword. You know, just make sure you don't connect with the sharp bit of it. And, um, and these guys, our musicians, spent an hour playing the same song. The same song, the same song, the same song through this time as we went through all of these men, dubbing them all, you know. And then here they are early this morning. And, I, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, God, thank you. Thank you for people who are living on assignment. Thank you for people who said, Lord, I'm going to use my gift. See, God gifts us. I believe that, I believe that um, Michael Jackson, how many remember him? Good old Michael Jackson, yeah. king of pop. I, I believe that he was gifted to be a worship leader. I really do. You know, I don't think he quite found that calling. But he did lead worship, though, because you see in the contest, people are doing this. You know, <laughs> not sure. If, I don't think they're worshiping Jesus. But there's a gift right there. And when you, when you decide to use the gift that God's given you for kingdom purpose, you hit a whole new level of life. You hit a whole new level. You, you hit what I call the Holy Spirit NOS. You know, when you're playing those racing games or if you, you ride motorbikes, you hit the power band of the Holy Spirit when you start to serve God with your gift. If you're a craftsman, how are you using your practical skills to advance God's kingdom? What a challenge this morning. What a challenge. Hey, and if you're not sure, as I draw this message to a, a close this, this morning, if you're not sure what your personal assignment brief is, a great place to start is to do the Next Steps course. Seriously. You'll be led through a little inventory of all the gifts in the Bible and, and a, a questionnaire to help you work out how you're wired, how God's wired you. And then what you'll, be do, what you'll be given is an opportunity to step in and use that gift to serve in some way within the church. Let me tell you, the reason we do this, the reason we do this is not just because we've got so many jobs in church, we need more people to do them. Although we do have a lot of jobs in the church. We do need people to do them. But that's not the motivation. The motivation is so you can grow in your assignment. Because it's not until you get using the gift of God that it actually grows and that it actually becomes fulfilling. Are you with me? Have I still got everyone with me this morning? Anyone tuning out? Anyone sitting beside someone tuning out? Give them a shake. I know it's getting lunchtime and all that. And there's rain on the roof and it's, oh, go to sleep. Friends, this is really, really, really important. It's really important. That's why I'm emphasizing it so much. Because unless we hook into God's assignment, friends, we'll get to the end of it and it'll all be wasted. It, it'll be like we were climbing the ladder, but the ladder was leaning on the wrong wall. We got to the top and we're stuffed. I want to spare us all that. I want to spare us all that. So we've set up a system to help people find their assignment and to get serving in the church and let it grow and then see where God will take you. It's not just about getting jobs done. How, how many parents here had kids because you thought, well, there's so many jobs to be done around the house. Let's have a bunch of kids. And then we can give them all the jobs. They can mow the lawns. No, you know that having kids makes jobs. Inviting more people into church just creates more jobs. It's not about getting jobs done. It's about growing in the kingdom. This is Discipleship 101. You can't grow in God unless you're serving in your gift area. Friends, man, I just wish I had some other way of saying that. <laughs> That was even more effective than what I'm saying right now. Anyway, it's so true. It's so true. So next steps will help you find that and it'll give you a place to serve and your brief will become clearer and clearer and clearer. And once you get involved in church and start discovering your gifts and your passion, I would encourage you to capture it in a simple little statement 
like I've done. Here's my personal brief. My personal calling is to help helping people to fulfill their destiny. Friends, that's why I'm on this planet. After 30 years of, 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 of leadership, Christian ministry, I've come to realize that's where I shine. One of my gifts is encouragement. Many of you have encountered that gift. I just can't help but encourage people. I just got to encourage the daylights out of everybody. Whenever I'm in another church preaching or something, I just own the place. I'm just getting around encouraging people, and you'd think I was the pastor of that church. Because God's given me a gift. It might not be your gift, but it is mine. And I'm using it to build God's kingdom. And this is, and, you know, and so that, I, I, you know, when I get a bit lost, like we all do from time to time, I think, God, now what was, oh, that's right, that's my brief. Let me scroll to the top of the page. It's helping people discover their destiny. That's what drives the preaching that I'm doing right now, because I want you to discover your destiny. I'm, I'm preaching this for no other reason than I want you to fulfill your destiny. And when you're fulfilling your destiny, I'm fulfilling mine, because my destiny is wrapped up and you're fulfilling yours. How powerful is that? So capture it, capture it in a brief. Praise the Lord. Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've called us. We thank you, Father God, that there's, there's passion in the house today. Lord God, we thank you that there's faith on the earth today. And God, we want to be people who fulfill your calling. Church, with our, with our, just in this prayerful moment, I just what I'm going to do is, if, if you this morning are saying, God, I just want to renew my commitment to living on assignment, you know, you might have been serving God for years. You might be right in the middle of it now, but I'm inviting you to just renew that commitment today. Then I just invite you to stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet all over this building. Lord, as we're standing, what we're saying, Lord, is, Lord, I've just recognized again today that, man, this is what it's all about for me. And I'm going to serve you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to lift you. I'm going to be like Fui up in Taiapi. God, I'm going to serve you with my life. I've got one life to live, and I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste it, God. Lord, as people all over this building are standing, Father God, I pray that Holy Spirit, you just come with a fresh empowerment, a fresh focus, a fresh vision, Lord, fresh passion, and a fresh seeing of the next step. This is, why, this is the way forward. This is the way forward. Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Let not one of us fall off the bus. But Lord God, let us all be running in our lane, running, Lord God, for your purposes. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And once again, just, just one moment longer with our heads bowed and eyes closed. You know, there may be people here today and you've never made a commitment of your life to Jesus. And today is your day. Today is the day to say, Jesus, I'm going to invite you into my life. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to set my life apart to serve you. Would you come and save me? Would you come and clean me up? Would you come and give me a new mind and a new heart? So friends, if that's you this morning, I'm just going to invite us all to pray. And you pray with all of your heart. Uh, last Sunday, I led the uh, Mungaweka church in a prayer like this. And there was an English lady, about 60 years old in that service. And she prayed that prayer for the very first time. And she gave her life to Jesus. And she was so excited excited after that might be you this morning you might be doing this for the first time so pray with me just pray with me right now Lord Jesus thank you for dying for me on the cross I reach out to you today I ask you to come into my life I choose to turn away from a life of my own selfishness for just living for myself I choose to now to live for you Come and fill me, Holy Spirit. Help me to live for you. I choose you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, church. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.